My name is Philip Harrelson. I'd like to welcome you back again to the Barnabas study. And I've spent several, quite a bit of time in the last uh, little while uh, just kind of honoring Pastor John Harrell, uh, past, former pastor of, of Bridge City, Texas. And um, he passed away uh, last Friday night. And um, it's had a lot of memories, good thoughts on my mind in the last several days, but um, I want to kind of pick up and continue to talk. Uh, last video, I did mention the fact about how that Brother uh, Harold uh, got connected up with Charles Spurgeon. And uh, so in the, in the quest of it, uh, because of Brother Harold's recommendation, uh, I ended up purchasing the uh, Metropolitan Tabernacle Pulpit Again, 63 volumes, and it's well worth every penny I spent for it. And I um, was still, again, I was still working at the hospital whenever I started getting the um, Metropolitan Tabernacle pulpit, and you could get them from Pilgrim Publications there in Pasadena. And uh, Bob Ross was the one that published it. And in fact, I met Bob and uh, his son, Mike. Both of them have since passed away. And I think Pilgrim Publications has closed down uh, there in Pasadena. Uh, but they did a very good job as far as the quality of printing those books. And I, you had to get them two or three, maybe four at a time. And whenever I was purchasing them, I was paying, I think it was either 15 uh, maybe eighteen dollars a volume, which is not really that bad, and uh, ended up as as they um, printed them. I, I would uh, add volumes to my uh, library. Uh, but one of the uh, books that Brother Harold, uh, I guess he first initially asked me if I had read. That was probably the first time, probably in December of '03. He wanted to know if I'd ever read. Uh, lectures to my students and uh, lectures to my students again is a um, book that uh, Spurgeon wrote and I, I had been exposed to part of it because I'd taken a class uh, at a seminary and uh, just he, he talks about just giving individual uh, the chapters are kind of spent on various things as far as his pastoral ministry goes. And Spurgeon uh, actually had a pastor's college right there in London. He had an orphanage that he ran, a uh, publishing uh, company that was associated with them. But um, this book, if you've never, le or never read uh, Spurgeon's lectures to my students, uh, again, this is another, even if you don't read the whole book, uh, I think that there are a couple of chapters, about three chapters in this book that really uh, are, are very good. Uh, one of them is the, is the very first chapter. It's called The Minister's Self-Watch. Uh, I do know that the Chapel Library in Pensacola, uh, they send out free um, little booklets, uh, usually every month and you can in fact you can download them on PDF but they've got this uh, copy of Spurgeon's uh, chapter the minister's self watch he's got another chapter that's really very good and it talks about the the preacher's private prayer uh, I think that's a very worthy chapter uh, that you need to look into as well there's another chapter uh, that that every preacher should be require, required reading uh, on a regular basis and uh, it's called the minister's fainting fits and uh, Spurgeon dealt with a lot of he had gout and uh, because of that during that time you didn't just uh, go to your physician and and get a prescription for a, a medicine that could take care of that gout you just kind of had to ride through it and very painful and uh, Spurgeon did have gout uh, died relatively young I think he was 54 56 years old when he passed away and uh, so during the part of that physical sickness he dealt with a lot of battles of depression and um, he talked about the, the term that some of the older writers used was was called the vicissitude of life. Uh, that means that just the ups and downs, the normal highs and lows that all of us experience 
uh, in life. But Spurgeon uh, did spend a fair amount of time, and, and that chapter is very good about uh, the minister's fainting fits. And so after I read that book, uh, I ran across this book. And again, I recommend this book to you. It's written by Elizabeth Scoglin. <laughs> And uh, the title of that book is called Bright Days and Dark Nights. And uh, what she does is she talked about the fact that her dad was a was a minister and um, a pastor and he had his bouts with depression. And uh, she uh, he had a full volume set of Metropolitan Tabernacle pulpit. Of course, this was prior to the one that was published by Pilgrim. Uh, but she said as a, as a child, she could remember her dad um, just having the, the challenges. And sometimes you get so immersed and engrossed with the, um, the painful situations that you deal with. Uh, as a pastor that they really can can play on your mind and your spirit, especially if you care. Uh, if you care about uh, things, it, it, it has a tendency to play on your mind. And uh, I have uh, said it a number of times over the years, my chief sin, one of my chief sins is worry. Uh, because we worry because I believe sometimes we may not trust the Lord uh, as much as we as we perhaps need to, uh, but but anyway, she spends a lot of time where that she went through uh, her father's uh, books or the Spurgeon uh, collection, and uh, she said that going through. Uh, his books and looking at Spurgeon's sermons, once she, she learned that he had a, a bout and a struggle with depression, what she was able to do was that she was able to um, go about and, and find some of the, where the sermons were that Spurgeon would preach under a heavy burden. And uh, she, she kind of pinpointed those. So again, this book is very good. It's got a good bibliography. Uh, in it. Another thing that Brother Harold told me one time uh, was that he, he said this, and when he said it, uh, when the first time he said it, it kind of, you, you kind of like not sure what he meant by that, but he told me one time, he said, you need to be careful to stay off the downgrade. And uh, I, I had did not know what that meant. And so, uh, Brother Harold, what, what does that mean? Stay off the downgrade. Well, he was having reference, uh, again, this is another, this is volume six, and this is another set that uh, Pilgrim put out. It's called The Sword and the Trowel. There was a magazine that goes by that same name, and uh, it was published, I think, uh, maybe, if not monthly, maybe quarterly. And uh, Spurgeon would write article, articles. There would be other ministers that he was associated uh, with that he would get them to write articles about it. Well, uh, in the end, one of the things that they feel like kind of bumped Spurgeon over uh, into a pre, perhaps a premature death was he got censured. Uh, by his denomination because he became very strident uh, in his preaching about what he called the downgrade. And uh, he felt like that the church was becoming more and more lukewarm. Now, if he thought that it was becoming more and more lukewarm, I mean, look at what has happened uh, there in Europe uh, to, to a lot of the large Protestant pulpits. Um, but Brother Harold mentioned that to me. He said, it's important that you stay off of the downgrade. And so whenever he told me about the uh, sword and the trial, I started kind of getting these volumes here uh, along the way and started reading about them. At the same uh, time around about that, uh, John MacArthur, you need to get this book. It's called Ashamed of the Gospel. Uh, now, this is the first volume uh, published by Crossway. It was put out, uh, initially published, the first printing was in 1993. And then uh, MacArthur came back, and this is the third edition. And uh, the third edition uh, came out in 2010. And uh, this, again, this book is based off of MacArthur's reading of Spurgeon's uh, works about the downgrade. And, um, and so, so again, I, if, if Brother Harold had not encouraged me 
uh, to to get into reading some of Spurgeon, and I, he understood. I understand Spurgeon, Calvinist, uh, predestination, all that goes along with that. You find where in some of his sermons he even mentions Calvin, various things. Read with a filter, obviously. Uh, but again, just the exposure to reading that material about how important that it was uh, to stay off of the downgrade. And every generation uh, has to deal with certain dynamics. Of, of change and, and lukewarmness, and that's why we need we need strong preachers in uh, our pulpits. And, and Brother Harold, uh, one of the sermons that that I remember him preaching uh, was a, a sermon called "Getting Used to the Dark." He preached that sometime during the '80s, and uh, I managed to get a hold of a, a cassette tape. Uh, of that sermon. In fact, I think I may have gotten that sermon from Brother Raggio. Uh, it was one of the copies that he made for me. You you listen to Brother Harold, uh, especially that way. I guess he would have probably been in his 40s during that, that time era. I'm telling you, his voice rang out strident, strong, calling that church there in Bridge City uh, to just a stronger place and stronger position uh, for them to be able to, to serve the Lord. Over the time, I remember one time, Sister Paula, I don't know if Brother Harold knew this, but Sister Paula sent me a CD, and uh, she told me, she said that Brother Harold said not to let that one get out, uh, but she did send me a copy of it, bless her heart, and I listened to that, and I, I'm telling you now, Brother Harold's preaching, strident, militant, uh, provoking, convicting, and uh, that that was an aspect of Brother Brother Harold's ministry. I know that he uh, preached a series of sermons on comfort. That was one of the 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 collect or the one of the sermon series that he preached uh, there to the church here in Bridge City. One of the sermons out of that is "You Can Face Into the Wind." And I'll try to maybe track down some of those and talk about those in some future videos. But Brother Harold's voice, again, very strident uh, in, in calling people to, to lifestyle change. Uh, what we understand these days is just a commitment to, to holiness and separation uh, from the world. And so, so, again, that caution that he told me was about... And the fact about how that I needed to stay off of the downgrade. And again, it's like I mentioned yesterday uh, in some of the videos there, the preacher, the Larson's company, uh, a company of preachers, a great company of preachers. You start digging around and you start tracking down even more uh, books. And so I have added over the years, uh, this is a book called Living by Revealed Truth, The Life and Pastoral Theology of Charles Haddon Spurgeon. And this is written by a man by the the name of Tom Nettles. This is a good addition uh, for you to add to your library. Another one, uh, Thomas Braymeyer uh, wrote a book called Tethered to the Cross, A Life and the Preaching of Charles Spurgeon. And uh, again, another book marked up, uh, looked at, dog-eared, uh, just things that uh, has added to my own personal uh, just walk. Uh, this is a three volume set and this is one called Majesty and Misery and uh, I didn't purchase this brother um, Tony Mancino pastors up in, in Pittsburgh uh, sent me this set of books, but Volume One's Dark Gethsemane. Volume Two uh, is the Judgment Hall, and then Volume Three is Calvary's Mournful Mountain. And uh, these are sermons that surround uh, the crucifixion of the Lord. And uh, again, I, 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 Brother Harold, uh, again his his connection that he had with. Uh, uh, Charles Spurgeon was just a very, um, you know, it was a well of inspiration for him to dig out of and uh, to affect the preaching that he did there uh, in Bridge City. So just thought I would mention some of those experiences. So stay off the downgrade. And um, it's important for us uh, as preachers. I I think sometimes that... that um, that preachers need, uh, if, if you don't occasionally make people mad that you're preaching to, you're probably not preaching. 
Um, I think that if you that's born out in the Gospels, if you read the Gospels and you read the epistles, that there was a matter of the Apostle Paul, uh, even Peter, uh, in his epistles that he wrote, uh, and certainly in the gospel, some of the striking things that the Lord would say uh, while the preaching was taking place. And so again, uh, that was just one of the, I guess you could call it one of the warnings uh, that Brother Harold gave to me personally over the years. And that was this, you, you need to stay off of the downgrade and whatever you have to do in your life. Uh, to make sure that you you stay off of that that slippery sliding path, it's very important for you to do so. So, uh, with that, again, thanks for stopping by, and uh, thank you for just being here with me. Just the memories that Brother Harold has stimulated. I was talking to uh, uh, Pastor Wayne Naylor this morning, and I'd sent him a link to the. Uh, uh, obituary that was there in the Bridge City uh, News, and uh, he said, I, "He said I read that, and he said I thought, man, how powerful." Uh, and he never met Brother Harold, uh, but he said, "Just what a powerful uh, part." Uh, that that obituary speaks about Brother Harold and his commitment uh, to fulfill his task to serve the Lord and to serve the church. So I'm, again, thankful for Brother Harold's influence. So, Lord bless you. Thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you the next time around.